confirm it's part nine. Hello, everyone, and welcome. It is nice to see you, and I'm very grateful that you're here today. My name is Francesco, and with today's video, I want to show you how to quickly pick where to start in the Ontario Building Code. But before we jump into this, I want to remind you that just like all the other videos that I'm making for our course, this one has timestamps at the bottom. That way, when you come back to this video in the future, you can go to the appropriate portion of this video because it's stamped for you. Okay, let me set the scene. Imagine that you have been asked to analyze and evaluate a building according to the Ontario Building Code. Well, what would you do? After all, like everyone else here, so that's me, you, you, you at the back over there, all of us here, all of us here, we're all new at the Ontario Building Code and we are all here because this is a safe place to learn the very basics of the Ontario Building Code, right? So, what would you do? Well, I imagine that depending on whether you're using the hard copy of the Ontario Building Code or the electronic copy of the Ontario Building Code, you would either pull out both volumes of the hard copy of the Ontario Building Code or open both files of the Ontario Building Code. And then I guess you might realize that you're facing almost 3,000 pages of knowledge, which can be kind of terrifying because where do you start among 3,000 pages of a document? Don't worry though, because I'll tell you exactly where to start and that's the whole point of this video. To know where to start with the Ontario Building Code, you have to first determine whether the building under consideration is a Part 3 building or a Part 9 building. That's a very fancy way of saying this. First, find out whether the building under consideration is covered by Division B Part 3 of the Ontario Building Code, or if the building under consideration is covered by Division B Part 9 of the Ontario Building Code. By doing this, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do this in a moment, we suddenly are now only focusing with Volume 1 of the Ontario Building Code. And then, within Volume 1, we're focusing only on either Part 3 of the Ontario Building Code from Division B or Part 9 of the Ontario Building Code from Division B. And that's a great improvement from having to look through 3,000 pages, right? We've now cut it down to maybe, what is it, 300 pages at most? So, how do we determine where to start? Do we start with Division B, Part 3 of the Ontario Building Code, or Division B, Part 9 of the Ontario Building Code? Well, first, we have to learn about the three parameters that we are going to use to decide if it's Part 3 or Part 9, okay? These three parameters are specified under Division A, Part 1. Specifically, they are found in these articles. So to define the, the parameters for Part 3 buildings, it's under Division A, under Article 1.1, one, point one, point two, point two, and under Division A, under Article 1.1.2.4 one, point one, point point for Part 9 buildings. Please make sure that you read both of these articles and everything else that's under each of these articles. So read all sentences and all clauses under these articles. Also, I just want to provide a quick reminder of what these letters mean in square brackets. They refer to the division in Volume 1 of the Ontario Building Code. So A here refers to Division A in Volume 1, B is Division B in Volume 1, and C is Division C in Volume 1 of the Ontario Building Code. Now, some people don't use these short forms. Some people do, okay? So I just want to make sure that you're aware of this. Now, if you've checked out these articles right here, you likely notice that there is a lot of information to read under these articles, right? That's a lot. Well, I want to give you a handy tip 
So you don't have to use this article here to determine if it's a part three building or this article here to determine if it's a part nine building. All you have to do is try proving that the building under consideration is a part nine building. If you prove that that building under consideration is a part nine building, then you just figured out that you want to start with part nine of the Ontario Building Code. If you cannot prove that the building under consideration is a part nine building, then you just figured it out that you want to use part three of the Ontario Building Code under Division B. This way, you're always only using this one article right here, <clears throat> as opposed to both of them. And according to this article, you have to evaluate these three parameters for the building under consideration. Building height, building area, and major occupancy. I should say that these parameters are also identified as building characteristics. Now, I want to explain each of these items for you so that they make a bit more sense. Fortunately for us, the Ontario Building Code comes to the rescue. Did you notice how each of these items are written in an italicized font? So a font that's at an angle. Do you remember what that means? That's right. It means that each of these items is specifically defined in the Ontario Building Code under Article 1.4.1.2 in Division A, defined terms. So, let's start with building height. According to the Ontario Building Code, building height is not about the measured vertical height of a building. Instead, according to the Ontario Building Code, building height is a measure of the number of stories in a building. But don't take my word for it. Go read the definition of building height right now. So now that you've read the definition, you see what I mean, right? It's weird. It's not the measured vertical distance, the height of the building. It's the number of stories. Now, don't worry. I got you. I promise that in topic six, I will go into more detail about this weird thing about the building height not being the actual height of the building and the reasons for that. For now, let's just take this at face value, okay? Oh, and if you're still with me, I also want to clarify the meaning of the word story. It is pronounced exactly like the word story, like the stories that you tell children or friends. However, notice that it's spelt differently because it means something completely different. You see, story, especially for my friends whose English is not their first language, is the proper building code word to define what we commonly refer to as floor. So, you know, first floor, second floor, third floor, fourth floor, and so on and so forth should actually be correctly referred to as first story, second story, third story, et cetera, et cetera. That's the correct building code term, okay? So, for example, for this building here, Maybe I'll, I'll move a little bit out of the way so that you can see it better. So for this building here, what is the height of this building? Since the building height is the number of stories, the building height here is seven stories. The next building characteristic I want to identify is building area. According to the Ontario Building Code, building area refers to the greatest horizontal area enclosed by the walls of a building. So I've uploaded for you, oh, I'll just make myself a bit more visible here. I've uploaded for you in your course notes right here, a number of images for you in the course notes that go into a lot more detail about this. So please have a look at your course notes. However, for now, for the purposes of this video, I want to clarify this a little bit more. Think of it this way, okay? Imagine you're holding a building 
in your hands. First, you want to peel off the roof. So take the roof out of that building and peel it off as if it were a can of tuna fish, okay? Now that the roof is off, pretend that your building, the one you're holding in your hand, is a giant cookie cutter. And you take that building and you press it all the way down into the ground. All the way down until it's flush with the ground. Would you see how the outermost walls of that building would then leave an impression into the ground? That impression, that hole, is building area. That area is the building area. Okay, and this impression that it would leave into the ground, kind of like a cookie cutter, would take into account all the jutting outs and jutting ins of that building. So let's do maybe a simple example. Okay, let me show you how the building area would be figured out for this building. As you can see, the roof has already been peeled off of this building. Okay, and then I would go on top of this building and press it all the way down into the ground. And it would leave this impression on it, right? Does that make sense? You take the outermost walls. I'm showing them in red over here, okay? Finally, the surface area that's enclosed by the outermost walls, that is the building area that you see right there. Does that make sense? I hope it does. The last building characteristics that I want to discuss with you is major occupancy. Just like the previous two items that we just covered, major occupancy is identified under Division A uh, under Article 1.4.1.2. Furthermore, if uh, major occupancy is sounding familiar to you, it's because we previously covered it under Topic 2. Remember? So go check out Topic 2 for a reminder or Go check out topic two if you haven't covered it yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now that we are all up to speed with the definitions of building height, building area, and major occupancy, we are finally ready to distinguish between a part three building and a part nine building. Are you ready? First, you want to identify whether the building under consideration is three stories high or less. Here, I'm going to make myself a little less visible. There we go. That's the first thing you have to do. Building height is a less or equal to three stories. Next, you want to identify whether the building under consideration has a building area of 600 meter squares or less. Finally, you want to identify whether the building under consideration is one of these major occupancies you see on the side. So C, D, E, F2, or F3. What? I have just listed are the three conditions that prove that the building under consideration is a part nine building, according to the article that I'm showing at the bottom right now in gray. Okay. So that's according to article 1.1.2.4 under division A of the Ontario Building Code. So as long as all of these three conditions are through are true, then it's a part nine building. You've done well. You now know that you can start with part nine of the Ontario Building Code under Division B. But what if even one of these conditions is not true? For example, what if the major occupancy is not one of the five listed just on the side here? Don't worry, that's okay. Because you have just figured out that the building under consideration is actually a part three building. Yay! Well done. That means you automatically go to Division B, Part 3 of the Ontario Building Code for the analysis and justifications and requirements for the building you're analyzing. Now you know where and how to start with the Ontario Building Code whenever you are faced with a new building. And guess what? You're also now ready to try Question 3 from Homework Set Number 1, which is uploaded for you on Brightspace. You're going to find it in the same place where you found the course notes that gave you access to this video. Folks, this means we're done. It's the end of this topic. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to view it. You could have done anything else, but you're spending time watching this and I really appreciate it. Don't forget, 
If you're a student in this course, please download the course notes to your device of choice. Until then, thank you for your time, take care, be well, and hopefully I'll see you for topic four.